Thank you, Papa and Tablo, and get a bless you, Javi, give him the way. Mangi, the place, give major. Me like to thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Ja! Me sabe go long way, Thomas long you. What pass in me long, me sabe karangi turu. You no look, look nothing, na lari me illus. You kiss him back, you old sand bikini ni blong you. Papa create a king blong me. All time you pass long life long me. Good pala time, not time long, but you stop one time me. Oh, I know too. Hello, my name is Rudolf Hapley. I am a retired pastor and the son of the missionary couple Wilhelm Hapley and Hedwig. I was born in Finchhafen in Papua New Guinea and I also worked in Amaron at the Evangelist Training Center. My parents were the first Lutheran missionaries to enter the Biro area on the 1st of November 1960. For that reason, in this year, on the 1st of November, it will be 60 years since they entered that area. I am here to tell you the story of what happened, what they saw there and what they did. This may be interesting for you because it is part of your history. And in doing so, I will try to fill up the gap in the history of the Wiru area. I am using diaries, circulars, letters and publications of my parents to tell you what they saw happening in those first years. I have also used anthropological literature to supplement information from the diaries. All data is verified and can be traced to the source. This YouTube offers you a trustworthy database. There are many more documents on the general history of the region. Everyone is welcome to ask some of the old people in the area how they experienced those first years. Such stories could complement the diaries of my parents and give you a wider picture. The Lutheran Church in Wiru started in Yalibu. The mission station Yalibu was established in the year 1955. Many people have asked the question, who were my parents? What did they do before they came to Yalibu and later on to Wiru? So here's a story to tell you what happened before they came to that place. My father was born on the 15th of April 1913 in Salankawa near Finchhafen. He was the son of Johann Christian Hertle, the first cabinet maker and builder of the Lutheran mission in New Guinea. Among other buildings, he also built the St. Andrew's Church in Ampolai, which many of you may know. His wife was Kunigunde Ni Bushman. My father grew up in New Guinea and took his education later in Nuremberg and Neuendettelsau in Germany. He was ordained and sent as a missionary to New Guinea 1937. There he met his future wife Hedwig Ruf, who was born on the 2nd of March 1912 in Steinhardt, the daughter of the former director of Neuendettelsau Lutheran Mission Reverend Rudolf Samuel Ruf. Hedwig Ruf was trained as a nurse at the University of Erlangen and as a midwife in the University of Tübingen and passed the examinations with a straight A. She was also trained in a topical medicine in Tübingen. She was sent to New Guinea on the 9th of April 1937. My parents met in New Guinea. Both of them had worked on the mission field for some years. My father learned Yabim in Masutying, was stationed in Kayapit, in Mumeng and in Ogelbeng. My mother worked in the Kakako Hospital in Finchhafen. 
They married on the 4th of September 1939. After the wedding, they moved to Sattelberg and later to Vasutieng near Lugawi. When World War II broke out, my parents were evacuated to Australia in 1941, where they stayed for 10 years working as farmhands on several farms in Queensland. It was a time of poverty and hardship. But they carried on and hoped that someday they would be permitted to go back to New Guinea. In the year 1951, they received a permit for New Guinea and arrived there on the 6th of January. They were stationed at the Yabim Area School in Bumayong. After serving seven years, they returned to Germany 1957 on furlough after having left their home country 20 years before. 1958, my parents returned back to New Guinea. They were originally posted in Yalibu, but should proceed to the Wiru area as soon as the Australian government would open the restricted area. So, my parents were experienced missionaries before they came to Yalibu and then to Wiru. My parents had five children. Rudolf, Irmgard, Dieter, Walter and Adelheid. So the setting is opened and here goes the story. After furlough, my parents boarded the ship Reifenstein in Rotterdam on the 4th of September 1958 together with their youngest children Dieter, Walter and Adelheid. They left their older children, Irmgard and Rudolf, back in Germany for them to complete their studies. The ship brought them to Australia, where they arrived in Sydney on the 27th of October, 1958. Then they took a, a train to Brisbane, and after visiting relatives in Toowoomba, they boarded a plane going to New Guinea. They landed in Lai, on the 3rd of November 1958. The two boys, Dieter and Walter, were put into a plane and flew to the Catherine Lehman School in Wau. My parents then attended the church council meeting in Tami from the 13th to the 16th of November. In this council meeting, the Yabim congregations were called to send evangelists to the highlands. After the meeting, my father took a plane to Yalibu on the 24th of November to build a house for them to live, while my mother visited all the hospitals around Finchhafen in order to catch up with the progress made in the field of tropical medicine. She visited the TBC hospital in Butowing. She also visited the new hospital in Finchhafen, which was not yet completed, but she met the leading doctor, Höger, who introduced her to the new medicines and she officially registered herself as a nurse in Finchhafen. She was also instructed by the renowned Mr. Edwin Charke, who later became the chief doctor of the Gobin Hospital in Karka. Mr. Karl Kirsch guided her through the TBC hospital and gave her instructions on the new medications. My mother knew all too well what she would be expecting in a pioneer situation in Yalibu, and she was keen to be updated on the latest developments of medicine. So, my mother was well prepared. On the 2nd of December, my mother boarded the ship Simbang, together with Adelheid, on its way from Finchhafen to Medang. There, she went into a store and bought supplies for the station in Yalibu. And she gave instructions that the overseas boxes which would be coming should be transported with a larger machine to Yalibu. Then on the 8th of December she boarded a Cessna with Adelheid and then she flew into the highlands over Begasin, Yagaum, up the Rabu Valley, then past Mount William and then they saw Yalibu Mountain and Mount Gilwe. The plane took a turn around and landed on the airstrip of Yalibu. 
My dad was there to welcome them, and lots of people who stared at Mother and Adelheid with her dolls. They were escorted to some bush houses, which would serve as their home for next years. There was an aluminium house in which Claire and Reverend Leonhard Charke lived. The flooring was made of wood. It was quite comfortable. The kitchen was built separately. Besides that, there was an old bush house that had been used by Reverend Hermann Strauss. It only had one room which was stuffed with other people's belongings. That is where they would be staying at first, until the bush house, which was under construction, would be completed. On the hill on the other side, she could see two aluminium huts, which were occupied by two American padres. Besides that, one could see the skeleton of a building that would later serve as a permanent school, and lots of huts used as storage places and dwellings for the workers and household helpers. This was definitely quite a different setting than they had ever experienced before. But they found a place to sleep and waited for the next day to lead them into an exciting future, here in Yalibu and later in Viru. Next morning, they took a look around the station. There were three prominent buildings there, a church, a school and a trade store. It was the only one in the area, and for that reason people from far and near came to buy goods there. In the backyard of the premises you would find a vegetable garden, later two cows, some goats and several chicken were kept. The station had four pit sores running in a nearby forest, which my father checked every week. He was primarily occupied with the construction of the bush house for his family. It was completed by Christmas and the family moved in on Christmas Eve of the same year. The government station was situated directly at the airport. There were two houses for the government officials and a whole villages of houses for police force, which at that time were called police boys. Besides that, there was a dispensary staffed by a doctor boy. The government provided postal services and telegram facilities. The government was working hard in road construction. The road to Mount Hagen was not yet completed, but they were already working on roads leading to Wiru, especially to the big village in Kawo. To complete the picture, there were two further missions in Yalibu. One was the East and West Indian Bibles Mission. They lived a little further out of Yalibu. And then there was the Summer Institute of Linguistics, and Dr. Harlan Kerr was a linguist who lived in a small village called Bologna together with his wife. They had received a special permit to make linguistic studies of the Biro area and made all of these studies available to anyone who would like to have them. They often called into the house of my parents on their way to the small hut in Bologna. So, the local people in Yalibu had three different denominations to make their choice. And each denomination was given a name. The Catholics were called Padre, the Bible mission was called Bible, and the Lutheran mission was called Mission. But they didn't make their choice on the basis of doctrine, as history will show. This is the first part of the history of Tiripini Circuit. On a whole, there will be 15 parts. I would be very happy to welcome you to the second part, which will be forthcoming. So, check it out. Is my commander forever, me grateful and praise you, Jesus, me savior. Good now, me here, good for a tongue, me here. Be the deep, be a kadama say. No other name can never replace my creator. Oh, I know to Nale. Thank you, Lord, Kai Kai Nawara. Thank you, Lord, who's not so bad. Life is stopped, now I can't. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, name 
Let's sing you for me, Jack. Thank you, my provider. No Babylon style could ever stop me. Burn out the devil and you'll take. Give thanks and praises to the most I can.